Alrighty, so last time we left off in the middle of what's promising to become an increasingly awkward uh, barbecue with all of our friends we've been avoiding this entire trip. Um, yeah, it's worse when everyone's all together. Like, yeah. <laughs> the tension is raised. One of them... That's how you know it's a good friend group. I've been talking with, with, with McSkinny, and he said that, like... He said the most alarming thing, which is that Echo started out as just being, like this like romantic character dynamic game and that was it and all the supernatural stuff just came later that's fucking just weird kind of like that was not that was not the starting point like for like the first 30 60 thousand words or whatever none of that stuff was there or suppose something like that it was what he said i'm like what the f i don't know how to process that thought <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, think just thinking, that. Like, I'm just thinking like a blank piece of paper and be like i'm gonna write like a romantic graphic novel visual novel thing and just how you get from point a to point b yeah i guess if, if i was like alone in a room long enough staring at a blank piece of paper my mind just might like devolve into some crazy nonsense like this yeah everyone should write a hundred thousand word story it's just it's a fun experiment to just send yourself on and figure out the hard way where you end up compared to where you started it almost seems like like okay like i'm gonna build a skeleton and it's like well it's, it's, it's like when a, when a teacher assigns you a paper that requires a certain number of words, and you're like, yeah. well, what what random bullshit can I put between, like, this point and this point? And it just gets fucking wacky. I think about how many creators, how many, especially when, it, when something goes wrong with a story, how often the fan feedback is always that you should have had it all pre-planned from the get-go, and you should have, like, known where it was all going to go in advance, which is, like, that comes up a lot with uh, the new Star Wars trilogy. Which is interesting because famously, the trilogy people don't like was the planned one back in back in the in the two thousands, and the plan the trilogy that wasn't planned, the original one, is the one that people like. So like it's it's strange to expect that the new trilogy should have been planned from the start because like that's not usually how it goes. But like I t I specifically mentioned like if I want if I was gonna try to write a visual novel like. I'd be so terrified of having audience expectations and people like anticipating each release that I would have to have like a plan and know where it's all going and maybe even have like I thought about I talked about how like I would want to like maybe even just rewrite like just write the whole thing from scratch at the beginning before any of it sees the light of day and then you just deal with like oh yeah you do you do like the monthly release schedule of like actually coding and doing art for it but like it's written already i know i, I finished it i know how well, it ends but, and i did it right but what if like um okay so you're writing your your visual novel you, you release the first part people have like comments about something and you're like well and shit you're, i didn't yeah, think about you're like, this you're like shit i have to course correct <laughs> i have to course correct because like in, yeah. the, in the second part I, I go like they all hate this character and that character is gonna be like the, one of the yes. biggest parts of the next thing exactly and then and like and mcskinney said that like that's the fun of it is just uh not really knowing what's gonna happen next anyway like my understanding is that most uh my understanding from any any visual novels that i've especially in the furry space that i've been able to hear about it all is that largely you just like wing it kind of like you kind of well, maybe have like an end goal you're you're working towards but like only in like the nebulous like thematic sense and not like here's the series of, of scenes i'm going to write in chronological order or skeletoned out already there's there's um like there's an immense beauty that can be achieved with with this kind of haphazard mania that <laughs> like the roller coaster that gets you to the end of your of your story yeah. And, and and like my, you know, but at the same time, like you're you're doing this like great risk. Yes. Anime is notoriously stupidly convoluted, and you can end up with like a million, like you're novel risk, one piece. You're at piece. risk of being a Fifty Shades of Grey or a B Stars, in the bad way. <laughs> Which I know sounds strange Wait, coming what? from me. Uh, I was gonna say Evangelion because that's the best version of being able to wing something that I can think of. Yeah, Evangelion, because... yeah, Evangelion would be a good example. I'm saying Fifty Shades of Grey and Beastars are both examples of where the just writing everything chronologically as you're releasing it goes wrong. Because famously, Fifty Shades of Grey was a Twilight fan fiction with the serial numbers filed off that was released just weekly on the, to the public for free for the longest time until it got popular enough that they like got picked up by a, a publisher that would basically just put out for 
just basically just not even really edit it or do real publishing work, but just kind of like enable her to print it and make a bunch of money off of it if she just like changed the names and got, like got rid of the part where it's obviously just infringing on Twilight's copyright. Uh, and as a result, if you re like, I have never read Fifty Shades of Grey, but I've I've sat through. He's like, lying. He I've, loves I've, it. It's I've his sat favorite. Through, I've sat through multiple analyses of it. And, yeah, because he loves it. And consistently, what comes up is always the fact that like there very obviously wasn't a plan, and entire chunks of the narrative are just like they just sort of strangely set up characters or or threats or plot lines that then are just forgotten about and never come up again. That like a move that for example the movie adaptations just like those entire characters and things that just never get introduced because they know it's never actually going to be revisited but in the book it's just those are just dangling things that just come up and then they kind of just don't because that's what happens when you write like a, a chapter a week and then just put it on like a forum for people to read because it was the it was like AO3 fan fiction type stuff. Yeah, yeah. And B stars. What a boring fan fiction, by the way. If you're gonna write fan fiction, that's like that is <laughs> that is such a lame fan. There fiction. is a mountain of Twilight fan fiction. Well, no, I, but why isn't it kinkier? Like it should be more. Like this is like. Uh, well, yes, we're. Por it's porn for moms who've never read porn before. Like it's for it's like baby's first porn. <laughs> El James does seem like somebody who looks down on BDSM and thinks that it's a sign that something's wrong with you or something. Going by the writing of the actual story yeah. so that's just kind of generally like it's very much like a tame person's idea of what's risky and, and exciting 12 like, year old me read better person. inuyasha fan fiction like back then than like and some of those deserve their own novels okay no one's gonna give them the green light just yeah. saying but like famously b stars second half the part that has not been adapted yet and is going to be adapted into only one season of television instead of you know the two you'd expect for being the second half of a two season of what's had two seasons so far yeah uh it's famously just disorganized and full of just just the strangest tangents and like the introductions of entire concepts that seem to not go anywhere and so on and then it just kind of wraps up and so a show could potentially elegantly readapt that all into a way that makes more sense because the manga was just you know made for these like weekly or monthly magazine releases because that's how manga is released in japan uh and that constraint leads to strange outcomes that's why a lot of manga seem to kind of like wander around for a while i'm telling you man like <laughs> the they, they 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 have the highest record for me personally of like just dropping the ball in terms of narrative yeah but if, like i said if it pays off it pays off evangelion even though you blew all your budget and you couldn't finish your last fucking episode <laughs> and it was very esoteric but then you got that fucking sick ass movie that first movie is like the best anime movie ever maybe i love it uh so yeah sometimes it works out really well like like echo this is all to Hopefully say it's, it it's wild that, that products like this even end up the way they were. Yes. Like, yes. behind the scenes on... And by, by behind the scenes, I mean on Patreon, public, like, semi-publicly, not, like, insider knowledge on my part or anything. Like, Howley was even talking about how now he's going to rewrite Kemia because in the process of finishing Arches, he ended up exploring the themes that he wanted to explore in Kemia, and so now they're not worth doing so now there. It's redundant. So now it's Because it was this thing where he was, like, a thing that he was working through... But he was simul he was bouncing between Kemia, Interia, and Arches, and that mess made it so hard to push forward that he ended up seemingly like leaking those I themes into each of them. And now he's like, well, I've already I I feel like I've explored this now in this brought in this game that I've finished now, Arches. Time to gut that out of those other ones and refocus what those were supposed to be about. It's all an editing process. It's, it's why I'd be like that's why that's why I said it was. It'd be terrifying to try to like write these live, essentially, and why I was all the and that's why I was surprised when McSkinny was just like, "Ew, no!" So the whole fun is just not knowing what's gonna happen next <laughs> when you're writing it. I'm like, how do you cope with that? <laughs> that's terrifying. But anyway, <laughs> what I, something I meant to make, I get at earlier is just that like the, these games are really good at these like social dynamics that are like fairly realistic and, and are stuff painfully that are worth, painful yes. so here's a here's a painfully cringe thing we're dealing with this week is that we're dealing with chase again and all of his That's many infinite cringe. problems in this like he has so many problems in this route even before the supernatural stuff gets in and what we're dealing with now is that like 
Like last time we dealt with him not coping well with his friend opening up to him, his friend and sometimes lover opening up to him about like his, his shit that he's into and letting him into his world, then Chase pushed him away and was shitty about it and now he's alone, dumb loser. Uh, this time he's going to this barbecue and bringing people in and this fucker <laughs> has been bad-mouthing and bad-mouthing by proxy Leo this entire trip to Daxton and then just sort of let this group collectively meet up without like reconciling what Daxton's supposed to think or feel here and he's just letting this guy <laughs> fucking panic <laughs> because Leo has been framed as a threat <laughs> like Leo has been, has sounded extremely like an upsetting person and now we're just like yeah, here you go. Don't know what to do with this context. Have fun. <laughs> Daxton shrugs, then moves to sit at the table next to me. Chase, if you've got a minute, could we talk later? Uh, sure. I'm Chase. I have no idea what social faux pas that I have committed. The salamander looks grateful, but doesn't elaborate further. Well, Leo. you don't need him to elaborate further. You should know exactly what he's trying to talk to you about. Uh, Chase. <laughs> Chase. This implies that you're daft about this. Chase. Bleh. Leo, meanwhile, stands there rotating the spatula in his paws with his eyes on the dirt. After a moment, he turns, heading back to the grill with an expression on his face that I can't quite make out. With... Because <laughs> <laughs> it was when we just had, like... <laughs> All good, I hope, huh? Not really, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, fucking okay. So, yeah, you brought you brought the 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 two the two honest guy. Yeah. In front of the person that you've been bad mouthing, and he just made things incredibly awkward. But he is yeah. not at all to blame for this because this is entirely uh, a situation of Chase's own making. Because you shouldn't be you shouldn't be a. Uh, you should, like you said, you should reconcile you this before this to you allow this to happen. So, so Daxon being like dumbly, dumbly honest is yeah. not a, not his fault at this point. And he has that right. And Jenna will probably make it worse, so that's great. Oh gosh! After a moment, he turns, heading back to the grill with an expression on his face that I can't quite make out. Jenna props her chin up in her paw, smiling faintly at Daxton. Wow. What? Nothing. Just musing out loud. Where are you from, Daxon? <laughs> Jenna's like, I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Not a zebra, but I can make do. <laughs> no, she's just like, I'm gonna use you to cause havoc. <laughs> salamander. The salamander rests his hands on the table, rubbing his thumbs together. I've been living here in Echo for a year or two. Before that, I was in Colville, where I grew up. Ugh... Jenna stops smiling. Colville? Really? What? What's wrong with Colville? Everything, dude. Colville? Isn't that the place where the lamp posts that have a little cow. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the place with the lamp posts that have little cowboy hats that on top of them? That sounds adorable. <laughs> What's wrong with this? Oh, yeah. They have the cobblestone streets there. I went for a field trip once. That place is too rich, even for me. They put up those creepy, smiling native mannequins on the sidewalks as decorations, like it isn't grossly offensive noting its history. Like all the like those like wooden the Indians that they'll have at like cigar, stores. Cigar Indians, what they call them? Those, is that what they're called? Yeah, because they're, they're for advertising cigars, usually. Oh. Because it's, it's tobacco, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they shot that one big western film there. The one with <laughs> Jack Gillyhue searching for some family's daughter that got abducted by the Meseta. The town sort of wrote off that fame of the movie for the past 40 years, from what it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's now it's your turn to get a shot full of, of honesty, Daxton. <laughs> I mean, Daxton looks at all of us, crossing his arms tightly over his chest. It's not his fault where he's from. Like, <laughs> it hasn't been doing as well as it used to. Westerns aren't exactly as big as they used to be. It's kind of a shame that... 
It's not really surprising how ta tasteless most of them were. Oh my gosh, guys. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I get it, I know, but there are some things to be appreciated about movies of their time. You know, they're of their time. There are some very nice westerns, you know. Westerns are weird because they are like a weird form of propaganda in that they just make up a setting but convince everyone that they're historical. Yeah, but half the time the people in the movies don't know that they're not historical and they're just yeah. they're reenact they're they're acting out like a like a very cool story with, you know, with like it's very satisfying and rewarding at the end and there's vigilante justice and there's all of this neat stuff. I, I get I get the problematic aspects of this, but I do enjoy me a good western because it's just it's just fucking fun, okay? Okay, Jenna. <laughs> wow, you're turning on Jenna. Uh, dude, I've you're Kinney. <laughs> Jenna's Jenna's been on my list for a bit now. <laughs> I think you're, I think the original uh, impressions of basically every character has inverted. It has since com the completely of the game. inverted. Yeah, I mean, I think the one person that's been consistent is Carl. <laughs> Carl's yeah. the one consistent aspect. Like, you oh, slowly come around on TJ. Yeah, I've, I was I've always come, right. I've come around on TJ. <laughs> I've come around on Flynn. Carl's just a sweet stoner boy, like I knew he was. And Jenna, who's I thought was going to be a cute hottie patati, is just a mean hottie patati. <laughs> <laughs> and Chase is just awful, which I wasn't expecting. <laughs> like we were, we did, we had neutral expectations for Chase, but wow! <laughs> and, and, and what a what a betrayal for a POV character. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, I, I have to play this. I'm this. Carl shifts in his seat a bit awkwardly. TJ speaks up. Speaking of old West stuff, how goes the project, Chase? Leo said you couldn't hang out with us because you were working on it. Jenna reaches into the back uh, the backpack to pulls out and pulls out a notebook, laying it out in front of her. We were bored at the motel, so we did some research ourselves. If you want to discuss your findings, that is. I feel a little put on the spot, mainly since most of what I've done so far has been shooting B-roll. Oh, so what you're saying is that these other people have done more work. Um, on your project than you have done on your project. <laughs> and they're here as like, they're not even here to do your project. And you haven't been talking to them. Apparently my house used to be a castle. A castle? Yeah, I looked up Carl's house at City Hall. The record showed this big medieval looking place. There was some sort of collapse in 1915. Living in a castle would be pretty cool. Not that I need more space, but you get what I mean. House Hendrix, the Lords of Echo. I'd watch that show. We'd probably have too much sex and violence for you, man. I truly doubt there'd be much of the former with you on it. Damn! <laughs> Damn. I mean, uh, one of these two characters has been in explicit sex scenes, and it wasn't you, Jenna. I mean, hers, hers were just implied, I guess. <laughs> Fade to black. I mean, I mean, you know, Jenna's got skills. She's they got the, the zebra story. Like I believe, <laughs> I believe her. But don't diss Carl, you know. <laughs> Carl lets out a little snicker before drifting his gaze to the sizzling grill nearby. Even Daxon seems to smirk a bit. If you say so. TJ flinches at the lewd talk, and, Gina, and Jenna quickly shifts her tone. Continue, Chase. Well, like, that's the thing. Carl's ancestors founded the town, but I think Flynn's families are the one who mainly controlled it during the 20th century. There's tons of more names in the records for leadership positions. We were too busy making ice cream, I guess. Speaking of, I'm starving. How much longer, man? He calls out to Leo, the wolf looking over his shoulder. Unless you want your hot dogs medium rare just a bit longer, yeah? Jenna waves off the boy's banter, speaking to me again. That's strange. Noting Flynn's species, reptilians weren't readily trusted by majority society in this country until relatively recently. I shrug. I'm not sure whether it's relevant to what I'm trying to cover. I mean, I haven't been able to find anything about the initial 1877 hysteria incident. It's like all those files are just gone. 
I pause, chewing my lower lip as I remember something. There were some legal documents I found. You know, concerning the mine. I don't know, but go on. There was mention of some sort of messed up murder happening in the mine in 1915 that somehow resulted in a riot. No mention of what made... Uh, no mention was made of the 1877 hysteria event, though. Jenna pulls her notes up, her eyes bouncing left and right as she speed reads. That's interesting. You mentioned that year earlier, 1915. The census recordings show that there was a large drop of population between 1910 and 1920. I couldn't find any economic justification for it since the mine continued to operate and the railroad line still serviced Echo. Daxton holds up his hand. So, sorry, I'm trying to catch up to what you guys are trying to figure out here. Are you saying that these mine murders cause Echo to lose all of its people? The correlations do not imply causation, but this is for Chase's video report, not an academic paper. You know how it is. Being interesting is more important than being thorough. Well, well. an indictment of all of media. <laughs> also, back backhanded thing to say about Chase's major, which you made him get into. <laughs> That's just what she thinks of you, Chase. Yeah. That's why she picked it for you. <laughs> Your piece should be called Top 10 Reasons Echo Depopulated from Evil Mind Murder. You won't believe reason number two. Like, throw some boobs up on the thumbnail image and post it on the Pueblo website. I frown. I'm used to hearing how the internet age has made modern journalism sort of a joke now, but it still <laughs> st stings. Number five. <laughs> like, <laughs> number four. Like, <laughs> I love all the memes about countdown videos. They're very funny. This isn't... This isn't for the website or anything. This is just a class project. Then it matters even less, dude. You're not even getting paid. Hell, you're paying them thousands. They should give you some slack. I need to build up my portfolio. Because right now, all it has is a fluff piece about Pueblo's GSA's Pride concert. You still got a few more days, Chase. It isn't like you can't do your project and hang out with us at the same time. Ha 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 Watch me not do either. Watch me not do my project yeah, and I've also so, not I've hang so out I've so far been not guys. doing either. <laughs> I've, I've, I just have horrible news about the very idea of being able to do your project and hang out with people in general, too. Like, who the fuck? How? How? If your project is, like, especially when your project is research-based and you have to write something, like, hanging out while you're doing that is insane. Who the hell? No, I had to write, like, <laughs> I wrote, like, three research papers last week. Yeah. And then every once in a while, like, your brother would be like, oh, you want to go do this? And I'm like, no, I can't <laughs> do that. I'm sorry. Every day they add another rock to my chest. Seeing how many that can take. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I'm almost dead. Uh... Daxon looks a tad hangdog. What? <laughs> what's what's hangdog? Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> what's hangdog? Ah, oh, got you. Got you. Got you. Yeah. I'm feeling a little hangdog today. <laughs> what's hangdog? <laughs> hangdog. Got him. Hangdog. Having a dejected or guilty appearance. Shamefaced. Oh, like, oh, like, my dog. I think that if I think that it's, it's like a uh, I guess it's like when you're yeah I guess when a dog hangs Dro yeah droopy face they get all droopy and their tails their tail sags and everything I I, I mean somehow I'm just amused that the uh, it's uh, it's like it's obviously a compound word and one of the and part of the definition for it is another compound word in, in shame faces case yeah yeah I have never heard this term before ever 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 Hang I, dog? I, I, pre I got it. Like yeah, I, I was I knew I knew what it meant, it, con it contextually, but I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> I wasn't ready for a tad hang dog. I really liked the uh, the, the. Let us know in the comments if you've heard if you used the word hang dog before. Yeah, I wonder if it might be a regional. I thing. want a, I want a scientific poll. Give me a map of the world <laughs> and the United States, and everyone's votes distributed geographically so we can get to the, the the bottom of this of the science experiment 
this is your week-long trip you have to turn in before you have to drive home on Sunday. Yeah, don't hang out with your friends or else you won't be able to complete the project we yeah. just assigned you. Ta Daxon looks a tad hanged dog <laughs> speaking up from beside me. I hope I'm not imposing on y'all's reunion time. Oh no, Chase was taking care of that all on his own. I'll see what I can do. And you're fine, Daxton. The thought strikes me that tomorrow's the day Flynn plans to question TJ. I don't think anyone will be in much of a hanging out mood after that. <laughs> As he's just smiling at you right now, he doesn't even know. <laughs> Maybe I should warn him? After yesterday, I don't know if I should give a damn what Flynn wants. Uh oh, is this going to be a choice for us later? We are not a Flynn friend. But maybe that's too harsh. Maybe I just don't want to think about him right now. I hear the sound of heavy foot of heavy steps on soil, and the wafting smell of cooked meat fills my nose. <laughs> <laughs> he slid in there. With that expression. That was so fucking funny. <laughs> Watch him slide in there with like a tray of meat. He's like he's like a he's like the singing candle from Beauty and the Beast, and he's like Oh ho! <laughs> be my guest. Be my guest. Just fucking. Be my boyfriend, Chase. I love Leo's you. Leo's sliding into frame behind people with that expression as a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with that face, I, I don't trust. I don't trust like that. <laughs> Glancing up, Leo's standing over me. He holds out a pair of tongs from the plate of bacon and hot dogs. Burns and booze are all the cooler. Buns, buns. And booze. There we go. Buns, not burns. Burns. I was like, what's it? I was like, what do you say? I was, I was like half expecting the sentence ends with like, yeah, like uh, the burns will taste better with booze. Ha 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 ha. Pour Cooking some booze bed. on that burn, because you guys are all being mean to each other over here. That's just their default. Buns and booze are in the cooler. As if rehearsed, Jenna picks up a small plastic cooler from beside the table. She rips open the packaging and distributes the buns accordingly. Is it just alcohol in there? TJ sounds disappointed. <laughs> I got just some juice pouches, TJ. Don't you worry. Some juice pouches. Oh. I got some high C. Yeah, some Capri Sun. Some Capri Sun. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, I did. Got those little, like... Wax bottles you twist the cap off oh, of and the, squeeze the, the, the drink Kool -Aid out. Kool-Aid ones? Yeah. yeah. Kool-Aid jammers? Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. Oh, we're ancient. We are ancient. We are ancient. I had to, but you know, but I had to buy a, like for our break room at work, I went yeah. and used the company credit card, because I'm fancy, to to buy a bunch of stuff from Target and like basically give them a bunch of snacks back there. And I did, I did buy a box of Capri Suns, and you know what was gone immediately? The box of Capri Suns. <laughs> Everyone wanted the Capri Suns. They so. also have very little actually in them, so you just Yeah, as an adult, through. when you're holding a Capri Sun, you're like, man, this is like three It's upsetting, sips. yeah. You're like, this isn't even a cup of juice. Those juice boxes are even worse. That's like, oh, it's yeah. insane. You're like, they wasted all this cardboard so that they could contain nothing inside? <laughs> What is this industry? For a kid, that's like, you know, you hand that to a toddler, that's like a- that's his entire drink for his entire meal. <laughs> I think even kids should drink more than that, probably. Well, not with how much sugar they put in there. Put more water in there, that, just cut it. <laughs> Yay, thank you! Yay, I'm a child! I'm a little baby! He smiles appreciatively. Daxon seems to peer curiously at the links before taking a hot dog for himself. Leah looks a bit reluctant toward Daxton. You guys, uh, eat meat? Daxton's already absolutely covering his hot dog with ketchup. By you guys, you mean salamanders? Leo nods. I finally get a bun and begin to assemble my hot dog, wrapping it in bacon. Yep, we eat meat. My grandpa used to say that you should never trust somebody who doesn't. <laughs> Damn, I'm fucking in trouble. Uh, uh, Sorry, Daxton's grandpa. I mean, you probably shouldn't trust Stephanie. Yeah, I mean, for other reasons, but yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever excuse you need. Carl looks up. <laughs> He's like, oh, except for Carl. He's cool and trustworthy as all hell. Friendship over. The ram tries to force a tofu dog into his maw to hide the big smile forming on his muzzle. Oh. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Friends. I want a tofu dog. 
No. Yes. You just get weird mushroom bean dogs to throw at me. Those were good. <laughs> I ate those for like the whole week after. So unfortunately, there was a casualty. There was a casualty. <laughs> For people that remember the, the that we did a Minecraft charity stream where we played the game for a, for an entire day and we until we beat it and we donated money to Color of Change and one of the donation goals was that I would reenact the Lindsay Ellis hot dog video mm -hmm. and so since that happened uh, I bought a bunch of veggie dogs so that <laughs> Stephanie wouldn't have to handle meat <laughs> and she just stood there in a power stance and just pelted me in the face with with these with these veggie dogs while I'm like sitting like kneeling on a tarp with a camera <laughs> pointing at me. It's a very stupid, B very day. porn studio setup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then we we just picked them all back up and we'll, and like rinsed them off and then uh, and I ate them. Yeah. And so there's food. Uh, but one day, Kiba's in here just get aggressively sniffing around, and. Uh, at his direction, I uncovered a forgotten vet, uh, mushroom dog that was uh, just this mummy husk of a of a of a veggie dog. Like it was <laughs> completely dehydrated oh and mummified, gosh. and just forgotten. Like behind, it escaped behind something, and we never and we didn't catch it during cleanup. So it was just in my room. That's so <laughs> gross. <laughs> How long, it was upsetting. How, long, how long after? It's probably a few weeks. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was like molding or anything like that. I think it just was a husk. Well, I mean, that, that just goes to show how like how uh, how made in a lab some of this vegetarian <laughs> food is. Because I don't even know if it could really actually spoil. It's probably just like, yeah. It just it just became jerky. Like it just contained stuff that we don't have to worry about becoming a huge problem. Like, I didn't smell it. Just the dog did, though. He, f he figured it out. He was, like, really attentive. I'm like, I mean, what are you so fair, into right now? You might be able to throw an actual hot dog and have it sit for, like, weeks and weeks and have nothing happen to it. Maybe. Like McDonald's Happy Meals. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Someone should do this experiment for some reason. I'm surprised Kiki didn't find it. She comes in here all the time. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, but you know what? She doesn't like when I drop vegetables. She's like really disappointed yeah. that I'm her owner because I don't drop stuff that she likes. <laughs> she's like, "Damn it, Stephanie!" I'm like, "I drop like lettuce." And I'm like, "She's like, mm. like why can't you be a normal person and drop pepperoni or something?" I'm trying to think of what the time scale was, but yeah, we were recording by then. I don't know if we necessarily recorded during that time window because it's too specific, but that was the pandemic. So that was 2020, and we definitely started doing stuff with you in like 2019 because that's what the year that. Uh, Sword, Sword and Shield and Death Stranding came out. <laughs> so it's been it's 2023, Stephanie. We're yeah, old. We are old. <laughs> too much time has passed. That 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 period where like this Stephanie Lee's taking over the whole channel. She's in every video was like four <laughs> years ago. That didn't even happen. So long ago. <laughs> oh my god. Really missed the boat on covering the expansions to Sword and Shield. <laughs> I mean, to, to, like, I'm sure that they were good. I'm still mad about that game. You did, you did not it, like it, it. It was not hard in any no. way. And but I, it gave I, us Obstagoon, so it did give us Obstagoon. Net positive. And I and I like um, Snom. Yeah. Like there, there are things that I do. There, there are critters I like. There's in things it. that have culminated there because the person who drew the the two animations you've been in so far. Their other project besides Ad Astra is this is is the Obstagoon Thruple. So like, you know, good with the bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we got all that from that. No, I I, I uh, regret nothing. Yeah. Shanae regrets Rian. Jenna looks at them curiously, waiting for TJ to finish placing relish on his cut lip, his cut up bunless hot dog. He cuts up his hot dog. Bunless, because he's he doesn't want to have bread because he's a, a tight little man. Well, and he, he has it cut up so he doesn't choke on it. It's like what you do with little kids. <laughs> so he doesn't have to choke on it. Yeah. I don't think it's that. I think it's I think it's just that he doesn't want to like use a fork to like awkwardly bite chunks off of one big phallic hot dog in a, at a time. Because not in a bun be too even. embarrassing. He would just be—it would just be a hot dog on a fork that he's just like taking chunks out of. He's like—he's all—he's got to be all dignified and tedious. <laughs> <laughs> Carl swallows, and he liked it. <laughs> Speaking up finally. Uh, I guess uh, your grandpa's at least half wise, dude man. 
Daxon shakes his head. Nah, not really. He was a major specious and hated Jews. I didn't really know- I didn't know Jews existed. Who are the Jews? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I don't know- I didn't know that there were Jews in this universe. Part of me kind of thought that maybe that's what they were implying Flynn- like Flynn's people were. In a way. For some reason I thought that's what they were getting at. Because of like the... Well, that's the, uh, it's like the... Because because a lot of the, the conspiracy is that... The conspiracy that, the, that they infiltrate government positions. Yeah, and, and the, specifically the, the, cons the, uh, the, the lizard people conspiracy is a Jewish conspiracy. So I was like, are they doing some... It's, it's something that made me recalibrate a little bit, because like... Flynn Moore and like his... his like, when I saw his general, like a lot, a lot of the stuff he was getting up to, and his name and everything, I'm like... I thought he was supposed to be coded as black. Like, that's what I took from that. And weren't the Moors black? Well, like it's, it's, it's not, I mean, it's not spelled that way. Yeah. But, yeah, no, okay. So I thought that, <laughs> I thought they might be hinting at that kind of coding, and we might, like, get stuff about his, like, his at-home, like, life experience when it was time for his route or something. I fell into this. So I got extremely blindsided by the, the lizard people running the government <laughs> plot point, because then I'm like, okay, I'm not... I'm not sure what, how to address this part, <laughs> or what to think right now. No, I fell into a whole rabbit hole one day about about moors specifically, because I was looking up black moor goldfish, which are the bubble-eyed ones. Yeah. And then I fell into this whole thing about, like, the art movement, and then I ended up reading all these Wikipedia articles, and it was actually really interesting. It's, just, it's funny how you learn stuff on accident sometimes. Yeah. But, but like... I okay yeah so like I so the thing that's confusing about the the Jew the Jews thing here is that being Jewish is a religion but it also like it is like one of those situations where it also implies um, like a place of origin which would also imply like a species in this situation because like generally like if you're like to be to practice Judaism is the religion but if I'm not mistaken. You're Jewish if you're from Israel. Or, or Jewish people are from Israel. Like, it, like that, that, those things are tied together culturally. I'm not an authority and I'm, I'm not and either. just generally mixed up on this a bit. Yes. Because, like, yeah, there, there is like. There was both like a religious and ethnic aspect to Judaism that's. Because it makes things muddy. Because people who practice Judaism believe that, it, like Israel is the, like their 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 religion is very specifically tied to a place, like it is it is very much tied to that that place specifically. So that implies like a cultural aspect because you could be born of a Jewish family and not practice Judaism, yeah, but you're you, still considered Jewish because you're you talking are, about how like every Masada character we've encountered is a desert fox. Yeah, like so so so, so to be a speciesist, it almost seems redundant to say that he hates Jews, because that because I in my head I'm thinking that Jewish people are a specific species, but yeah, maybe not. I'm thinking about how to interpret it because like obviously like we we instantly know what this person <clears throat> this type of person is in in, in, in normal, reality. Yeah. If you say this to us, like and major that's the, a and major that's the, racist, and that's the intent. But I'm inherently like, what does that mean? Well, because, in the universe? because in, in, in like what kind of in, it's, it's like the usual question of like what kind of what kind of animal was Hitler in this universe? In human in human speak, you'd say this person was a major racist and hated Jews because the implication is that a lot of Jewish people pass as white, but if you're Jewish, you're still considered an other by a person who's racist enough to be just racist, but also to hate Jews. Yeah, you know. So, but in this one, whiteness is made up. In this one, speciesist and Jewish might be kind of linked. So I don't know why you'd have to say both. This is all just randomly. I'm just speculating. Like, yeah, I'm just talking. It's just one of those one of the ramifications of this whole thing moment. It's like it's like when we when in Arches we realized that COVID happened, and we're like, wait, <laughs> wait, 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 COVID happened in the Echo universe. How many that 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 immediately like makes my mind go back and be like, okay, so like. 
where was Chase during 9-11? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> like, that's, like, immediately when that, something that specific is happening, I'm then back feeling like, okay, well, that means everything else happened, right? So, like, that just, this just is reality, but animal people. <laughs> so, like, that like, that begs that question. <laughs> where was, it's, it's like, like, where was Chase during 9-11? <laughs> when my, like, it's like when back in the day, my brother was reading Watchmen, and I was trying to explain to my dad, like, how, uh, how it's a very serious comic, and it's not like it's not like for kid, like little kids. I mean, I mean, I wasn't telling my brother not to read it. My brother should, like, I was like, oh, I was so proud of him. I was like, he's reading this very adult comic, and I mentioned that, that JFK gets shot in Watchmen, and my dad's like, what? Like, like, oh my gosh! Like, it takes place in this universe. Like, it has so much reality in it. I'm like, yeah, dad, maybe you should you should read it. You might like maybe, it. Yeah. I, I don't, for some reason, I was like baffled that maybe, he was baffled that it children, had real world events in it. Like, maybe when you're giving something to children, you should check what is in it. Oh no no no! He, he was he wasn't upset about that at all. <laughs> like, he wasn't upset. He was actually impressed. He thought that that was cool that yeah. it had real world events in it. But, he, but the, the fact that he didn't consider that a comic book could have real world events in it was funny to me. I'm like, yeah, dude. Like a lot of these comics have like. You know, you have like a comic where like Superman is there with like Pearl Harbor or something. Like these things have been around forever. Yeah, that's, that's what they the do. The first issue of Captain America ever had him punching Hitler on the cover. That's sick. Like that's sick as hell, bro. Like, these, these are not secret parts of comics. <laughs> I know. Just my, my dad was like, "Whoa!" But like it's like real life, and I'm like, "Yeah, dad." Yeah. TJ chokes on his juice a little, and Jenna pats his back a few times. <laughs> Whose grandpa's didn't? My grandpa didn't. Yeah, what the fuck, Carl? Well, we're not surprised. We're not surprised. Your grandpa was a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> I have horrible news. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, not not to say that, like... He, we, just, he literally, we literally know this. Like, that's the bad end of Carl. Being a little anti-Semitic might be the least of his problems if he's, like, murdering children. Yeah, so, the, like, the, the Hendrix <laughs> fortune is not ethically one. TJ stares at them, fur uh, furrowed-browed and wide-eyed. Mine? <laughs> he was like, my grandpa's not racist. <laughs> Boys. Tsk, tsk, tsk. Jenna Boys. gives us a look, speaking in that same old maternal tone she's been using since she was ten. She's like Wendy with the Lost Boys. <laughs> I'm really shaking my head. Leo comes around and sits at the remaining spot at the end of the table. Jace! I look up, quickly finishing my bite of bacon. That is my name. I was gonna ask you earlier. I got my speaker set up, hooked to my playlist on my phone. Pick us out some music, will you? He gestures to a pill pod looking thing with his phone sticking out of it near the grill. This is interesting just because the choice of music is a consistently uh, interrogated element of the narrative. It does come up a lot. And it's, it comes uh, out in Route 65, like immediately. Yes. But I guess also like if one of the one of the reasons people like ending with Jenna's route, uh, one reason is because people think that Jenna's route has like the happiest ending and that's there's there's, things to to that. there's things to interrogate about that interpretation. But one thing that is interesting is that uh, Route 65 opens with a music choice, and then Jenna's route ends with the same music choice, with the same options and everything. Like, that's an interesting little bookend. But it's been seeming, it seemingly has been used as like a moment to interrogate Sam's influence, and this is the route where Flynn's been picking up on it actively, so I'm just like, hmm. And didn't we already have... We've had people openly acknowledge the fact that apparently our face just like zones out during these, mm -hmm. and like and they were like, we're just known for this, and people don't talk about it much. I don't remember if it was TJ or Carl that mentioned it. I so think it was, it was Carl. Well, obviously Flynn mentioned it, and then Car and Carl's Carl yeah. was like, "Yeah, you're doing that thing you do with your face." Yeah. Like, I showed you that Kudzu art where, where he's just like picking out a, a meal with Kudzu and Kudzu's friends at some restaurant, and Chase is just like eyes unfocused and drooling, staring at the menu, just losing his mind. That's me making a decision. <laughs> Takes me five years. He gestures to a pill pod looking thing with his phone sticking out of it near the grill. Any guidelines? They have the sample music folder. Is, is that... <laughs> it's, ex it's exclusively sex tapes. I was gonna say. 
He smirks. What a callback. I think that is what he means then. I hope not. Uh, but how would that be on your... Well, see, in my head, I'm like, your Spotify. <laughs> but like, I guess on your phone, you have Chula. files. <laughs> That'd be fucking awkward. I rise up to my feet and head over to the speaker. I pick it up and squint at the, at the phone screen, the overhead sun casting uh, quite a glare. I see a few playlists on here. Which one should I pick? I thought that, I thought that just said come. <laughs> Cousin Angel's Rock EP. Hip hop and chill mix. Summer pop summer jams club slash beach playlist. Where's the chill hop beats to study slash relax to? <laughs> where's the like um? That'd be the where's like the trap that'd the, music? That'd be the worst picnic music. <laughs> chill hop beats to study slash relax to. <laughs> yeah, that'd be. It would just be kind of weird and ambient. Yeah. It actually, it'd be kind of what the music was that was just playing, and that stopped just now. Yeah, a little bit. Do um. I think that channel might have the long, the, at least the longest high-profile video ever, because they were streaming continuously for like months or years, and then a copyright problem uh, cut off that channel's uh, streaming capabilities for a little bit before it got rectified. So the stream finally ended, and it cut, and then YouTube just sat there and processed it for a while, and then spat it out as a video that was just, like, an unreadable time code. Just so many numbers and colons that you had to, like, break down, like, what they even meant at that point. Because oh it's gosh. like, like the, the units were beyond the type of units you're even used to a time code being for. Because I think there's, like, I think there might be, like, a 12-hour cap for a video you upload, but... A stream that goes on that long and then just spits out as a finished video that's just gonna be the whole duration of that channel being around for so long that like television episodes made parodies of it and so on <laughs> yeah I've seen, I've seen Halloween costumes of like somebody walking around with like the entire like background like taped yeah. to them like so if they go anywhere like it all like it's the whole backgrounds like there with them rock 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 and roll high school oh you can actually hear it I was I was wondering about that. This is not what I thought it would sound like. No, I was thinking like... Uh, Beach Boys or the Ramones California or some shit. Girls no! I hate that song. No! I was, so, I was so mad when that song came out because I was like, The California Girls song by the Beach Boys is so much better. Because it is. I, I those seem not related. <laughs> they're not. They're not. But if you looked up California Girls, guess what was the first song that freaking came on? It's going to be the Katy Perry one. <laughs> Huh. Is summer music appropriate for spring break? Well, around these parts, it's just hot. As soon as it gets hot, it's hot consistently for like fucking half the year. So spring and summer are basically the same thing where we live. But we don't get seasons. We don't. We get like hot and cold. Sounds kind of new agey. Wait, I actually really like this song. Good choice, Chase. You earned yourself a drink. I'm the drink emperor. Before I can respond, Jenna's already up on her feet. She's got two hard lemonades in her grasp. Throbbing. <laughs> she hands one to me. I gave her a grateful nod, hitting the bottle top against the edge of the grill to get the cap off. <laughs> After that joke, just getting getting the bottle off is just phrasing. <laughs> Unfortunately, the top just shatters, splaying shattered oh glass God. on the ground. Chase, you idiot. <laughs> he thought he was too cool. Yeah, he thought he was so <laughs> He was rad. so proud of himself, and he immediately blew it. <laughs> Christ. It's, you know what? What species is Jesus? That's a good question. Oop. Didn't mean to hit the mic. Everything's fine. I didn't hit the microphone at all. No, not at all. Jenna just smirks, taking a swig of her own drink. Well, I want to point out that, like, I've never seen a hard lemonade not have a twist off top. So I think Chase is just an idiot. Because yeah. those ones are always... I've never seen a non-twist off one. But I'm sure there is one... Twist off bottles hurt my fingies. Let's so you wrap it on your shirt. But I'm going to ruin my shirt. Oh, no! I, use, I, I just use bottle openers on twist offs. Oh, you know, I mean, There's you, no reason not to. You can. You <laughs> they can. just work. 
what I'm saying here it's still easier <laughs> is that I, I would probably rather use my rough up my hands than try to use a table to open yeah no up he thought he was gonna off. do some cool shit like open it with his teeth uh, I'm so manly and cool that I ran away crying from the BDSM bar because I'm a little baby I've opened up a bottle with a lighter before but I'm not very good at it that is a thing you can do that seems ill-advised <laughs> It's you just need a kind of flat surface. You, you, you use like your, uh, you, like you, you scrunch your hand to in a point where it's like a. Oh, I thought you meant with, I thought you meant you open it with fire. No, 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 not like that. <laughs> not like that. Not like, like a that. Molotov. No, you use the, the flat part of the underside of the lighter. Oh, okay, yes. and you basically just pry it off. Yeah, like when somebody uses their keys, which also is a little. That one scares me more. Because that can permanently damage something. Very smooth. Well, I suppose with that little gesture, it's dancing time. It's dancing time! I'm not sure if this is her type of music, but she begins swaying the beat of the pop song regardless. Aren't you supposed to do that for a new boat? <laughs> Break a bottle. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, he meant dancing, and I was like, what? <laughs> I'm still eating my hot dogs. Next thing I know, Leo's up as well, popping his shoulders up and rolling his arms. Leo used to be great at dancing. But that was when he was four inches shorter and 40 pounds thinner. It's kind of giving me dad at a cookout vibes, which in turn is starting to give me mild midlife crisis by proxy. <laughs> Chase. He's like 25. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah, you want midlife crisis? See me dance at the Look picnic. at Leo looking so old. I'm going to shrivel up and die. <sighs> yeah, shut the fuck up, Chase. TJ joins them and balances things out. Link's still doing some basic shuffles. I look down at my feet. Eh, fuck it. I'm famously good at dancing, nothing can go wrong. I'm an otter, right? Natural entertainer. Oh. 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 Well, let's dance with Carl because he's eating his hot dogs and he can't dance. You know what? Dancing with Carl is <laughs> gonna throw he, up his hot dogs you on us. Dance like right in front of him while he just sits. He's hot gonna dogs. throw up all of our hot dogs on us. I don't trust him. Choices. It's funny to me that none of we don't even we don't even consider the idea of dancing with Leo. Well, I mean, the problem is that if we. I'm, wor I'm worried that if we don't dance with Leo, then Carl or Daxon has to dance with Leo. So it's, it feels like, who are we saving from Leo? <laughs> well, we can dance with Leo. I want to see his dad moves. I, just, I also think it'd be funny to dance with Daxon, though, because he does not seem like he wants to. You want to see his dad moves? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's exactly safe to drink out of a bottle with a broken top, but I might as well try. You fucking you crazy You should not psychopath. try that. No. Any of the glass could be in the bottle. I feel like this line is a summary. This feels like a, a thematic summary of this choice. <laughs> like that that <laughs> subtitle is what it's like to dance with Leo. <laughs> it seems like a bad idea, but I might as well try. <laughs> like this summarizes Chase as a character. <laughs> Look, oh my god. The cuts in my throat will make the alcohol work quicker, right? Uh that's scary. That's like what an alcoholic would say. Yeah, also the throat is not the worst part about where the glass ends up. <laughs> After avoiding Leo for the past day, it might be best to just not ignore him right now. I'm still wary as hell about the way Leo has been acting and embarrassed over my own behavior. But he's still Leo. And he's the closest I've gotten to another person. Plus, somebody needs to stop him from doing that lawnmower move for the eighth time in a row. He's supposed to be walking towards him, and his whole face seems to light up. Otter! Leo. That's with me? I smile lopsidedly. Somebody has to. Hmm, <laughs> that's like, it's like your logic. I can feel the other's eyes upon me as Leo and I move a little closer together. I keep things simple, doing some basic two steps with a rolling of my waist, no gimmick moves. Leo begins to catch on and does the same. We've done this before, after all. Leo drags me to every prom, junior prom, and homecoming dance there was, haters be damned. 
I wasn't much for those sort of things, but he was the varsity football guy, so my unwritten high school- by, un, by unwritten high school law, he was expected to go to these things. We still good to talk later? Yeah. Sounds good. A lot of people in line to talk to Chase later, and I don't think he wants to do any of those. <laughs> no, honestly, the thought of anyone saying, like, hey, can we talk later? is terrifying to me. No, it's it not makes good. Me, I feel a pit in my stomach just thinking about it. Yeah. Because it always implies a very serious talk about something yep. that is probably bad. I hate the, we need to talk, we need to talk. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Like, just even thinking about that makes me, like, gives me... Later needs to become I'm like, now I'm like, real no, fast. please just spit it out. Like, tell me right now. I'm going to be really upset all day. Like, I'm not going to be able to go to work. Like, yep. like why are you mad at me? what I do? Leo's gaze drifts past me toward the table. He's quiet for a moment, simply moving to the rhythm. Hey. Huh? Do you remember when we... It takes me a moment, but my eyes widen, and I feel my neck begin to burn. Oh. Oh, God. Hey, you were the one who insisted putting... Ketchup on it. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? On his dick. Well, I know I got that, but it was why? His, it, was, it was his hot dog. Why would you? Why would you do this? Well, it just it was the one part of him that wasn't red already. <laughs> <laughs> Should have put that jalapeno ketchup on it. Leo smiles cheekily. Wouldn't bother me. I'm the spicy Latino, remember? He rumbles some. The look on your face when I can barely fit it in the bun. <laughs> oh my god. Well. <laughs> this just sounds like it's gonna- it just sounds- It sounds gross, okay? Don't inv I don't like the involvement of food in this. It's- It is somehow- the bun- <laughs> What do you do with it, then? Yeah. Do you just eat the bun- from around it? You can't I chomp on its dick? Uh, uh, you just lick the ketchup off and then eat uh, the bun? Like, that sounds gross! It's just bread and ketchup! I don't know how food play works half the time, but the bun feels like an unnecessary complication at that point. <laughs> like, that's just a lot. I understand... I, I understand, like, whipped cream and, like, the... I feel like this only, work, this only works for a funny photo. It doesn't work for, like, anything actionable. Yeah, maybe... What, what's this, a bun? Yeah. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Maybe it was just for fun. Maybe they just wanted to see it. Like, if we take a picture. Now my cheeks are absolutely burning. Man, you jerk. Whose idea was it again? My crotch uh, smelled like a concession stand for a week. Uh, so, you, so you don't bathe? <laughs> a concession stand also implies, like, popcorn and, like... <laughs> Like a turkey leg. They, and work, they, like, they work their entire way down like the theater food list. Oh god. It's not my fault you don't know how to properly wash. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Eh. <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, uh, fuck. <laughs> I can't get the line out. I'm awakening something. Eh? Says Mr. Musky himself. You can't help that he's musky. Yeah, this is. You can't. This is. Species traits off limits. Yeah. I let out a large puff of air. It feels just like when we were a couple. And that's the scary part. My mind reels back to Leo's confrontations with Flynn these past few days, his violent behavior. I take a step back, clearing my throat. Let's just dance, okay? I hear you. We continue on, and it feels like just an hour passes. Where is this? Where do you think this is? <laughs> um, didn't we say we were like... No, because we, we saw Chase's house already. But I think we're in Chase's house. Because Chase's house is all abandoned. Oh, because we're hanging up behind Chase's house up on a hill or yeah. whatever, where they always yeah. had to go. Because their parents would send them away uh, so they don't burn the house down. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's being nostalgic about his home now. And it's gross in there. Yeah. Yeah, this is a kind of a creepy image, to be honest. Yeah, no, this inherent, this, this unnerving angle. 
Also, how did it get so rough so fast? How long has it been abandoned? He was he lived here like four years ago. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how stuff works in the desert. 